Mistress Nightmare here, and I'm so sorry I haven't been posting anything for the past couple of months. Life has been crazy for me, so right now we'll be reading Chapter 2, Your Special. So, if you guys want more creepypasta fanfictions out there, please hit that like button, comment, subscribe to this channel if you guys want more creepypasta fanfictions out there. Until then, let's get started. Wyan ran all the way home, not stopping once she caught her breath. She burst through the front door and ran upstairs, shutting it very loudly behind her. She leaned against it as she slid to the floor, her hand over her lips. What just happened? She wondered, replaying the events that occurred over and over in her head. Her face grew red. She felt so embarrassed. The kiss that she received from Jeff, that jerk took my first kiss, she thought angrily. But then she knows that she didn't stay mad at him. Not for one minute. Oh, I'm digging too much into this. Time skip later that night. Oh, boy. All right, boy. Sniff it out. Jeff ordered, holding a piece of fabric out to his dog. Smile sniffed and tracked Wyan's scent. Jeff smiled a few times before pinching his nose to the ground. placing his nose into the ground and began to follow the scent, picking up the trail. He barked and let Jeff know where he was leading him. Great, lead the way. Smile walked through the forest, his nose on the ground, Jeff behind him. As if they were walking, Jeff spotted the flowers that Wyan was picking earlier that day. He stopped and bent over to pick them. We will be visiting a lady after all, he told himself. Jeff circled Wyan's house, trying to figure out a way out, which was the window to lead to her room. What the heck? He shouted. He couldn't find a window. It looked like it would lead to the girl's room. Aren't these any of her rooms? He looked up to the highest window. He couldn't really check it since it was so high up. It was clearly an attic. It couldn't be. Nah, her parents wouldn't be that bigger assholes than he, I thought. He, luckily, there was a tree next to it, so he climbed up and perched on its branch. It was only six inches from the window, allowing him to take a look. That's when he spotted. He stood on the branch. It was pretty dark, but his eyes adjusted quickly. Across the room from the, the window, there was Wyan sleeping on a mattress. His smile grew bigger as he quietly fiddled with the window and got it to open. He jumped into the room and landed slight, silently on his feet. As he walked towards Wyan, sleeping form, he bent over, noticing not much to it. The mattress she slept on, it was an overnight stand that had an alarm clock, which in the corner were four boxes, labeled uh, directly as casual dress nightwear. The smallest box read underwear. Jeff guessed that was clearly this is Wyan's version of her closet. Leaning against the wall in the middle of the room was the smallest chest. Jeff thought about it and thought Wyan probably stored medicinal or manual items there. He knelt down besides Wyan watching her sleep. <laughs> you aren't well aren't you cute he said as he pulled out his knife and began lightly tracing along her cheek i wonder if you'll look cuter if i made you happy like me wyan muttered in her sleep incoherently as she slightly stirred but he can but it continued dreaming nah you wouldn't be able to pull it off like i do Jeff chuckled as he put the knife away. He continued watching her as her chest moved with every breath she took. There were slight twitches from her dreams. He reached out and took a lock of her hair and between his fingers and twirled it. It's really no contest, Wyan. You're going to be coming to live with us. And who knows, maybe Slendy will even make you a proxy like the rest of us. The way you can kill with us forever. He smiled, bigger, at the thought of it. 
Then he reached into his hoodie pocket and pulled out a flower, the flowers that he picked, and placed them on the nightstand. I'll be getting... better be going. Maybe... Already very beautiful. But I also need my beauty sleep. He leaned over and kissed Wayan, lightly on the lips. Then he pulled back. He could have sworn he saw her smile in her sleep. As light filled the room, Wayan woke up. It was the next morning. She sat up and stretched and yawned. Oh boy, another day. She rubbed the sleep out of her eyes and she turned her head to see the time. That's when her eyes caught something that wasn't there yesterday. There, laying on her nightstand, were the flowers that she was eyeing yesterday. What the? She stood up and just stared at the flowers for a moment. Okay, I'm very sure I forgot to pick these yesterday, she said to herself and replied, replayed yesterday over and over and again in her head, the best of her abilities, but never recall ever picking these flowers. She picked them up and sniffed, smiling at the sweet scent they had. Going downstairs, she got a, a tall glass and filled it with water. She lightly stroked its petals of the flowers and now set them on her nightstand in the glass. She sighed. Maybe I did pick these, but I'm sure I ran all the way home. Hmm. She continued to think, just the end of a headache. Whatever, these are really going to place some color. The next three days went very quickly for Wyan. It was Monday, and she decided to skip school and walk around town instead. This place has nothing for someone like me, she said to herself. Maybe it would be best if I went with Jeff. She stared at the ground and kicked some pebbles. The only problem is I'm not sure even if I can control this power. What if they kick me out at the moment that they found out I can't really use it? She sighed deeply, knowing that she would have to inform Jeff about her little problem. Walking down the street, she may, she was unaware that a certain two students decided to ditch school as well today. Sonia walked hand in hand with her boyfriend, Jake, throughout town. Today was their anniversary. They were going to mean together, so that they decided to have the day all to themselves. That was until Sonia noticed a familiar figure just on the other side of the street. She tugged Jake's shirt. Hey babe, is that who I think it is? She pointed it out and pointed at YN. Jake squinted and made sure his eyes were not deceiving him. Yeah, what is the witch doing out here? Sonia had an idea. Hey, maybe let's make a day of exploring and having some fun with her. She said with an evil smile. Jake smiled back. Whatever you say, babe. He gave her a kiss on the cheek and they power walked towards Wyan, who was trying to stay quiet, making sure that she did not, they did not lose her. Wyan thoughts were interrupted when she felt someone grabbed her by the shoulder and shoved her to an alley. Hey, she shouted and stunned. Hello, little witch. Fancy seeing you here. Wyan's eyes slightly widened and looked at the person who pushed her. It was Jake and Sonia, the most popular couple in high school. They were also the ones who treated her the worse than anyone, being the masterminds of her misery, making those who follow them do their dirty work by the way they wouldn't suffer from Wyan's powers. It was the first time she really tried anything on them, so they were verily had no knowledge about Wyan and her abilities. What are you guys doing here? Wyan managed to ask. Oh, nothing, Sonia asked innocently. It just happened to be today that Jake and I had first met. Congratulations, Wyan said sarcastically. Huh, thanks, but things were getting a bit boring. That's until we saw you. You see, we're out of school right now, correct? Wyan simply nodded. That means Jake and I can carry out things like around without getting in trouble. She reached into her handbag and pulled out what is considered a bottle of vodka. 
hey, we're both, we're underage and you shouldn't be drinking stuff like that. Why insist? Suddenly exclaimed, she covered her mouth with her hands, realizing that she just scolded the two worst bullies. Oh, you know what I was, you're right, Wayan. Huh? Really? Wayan couldn't believe that Sonia was actually listening to her. Yeah, I guess you, you should get rid of it then. She uncorked the bottle, but maybe you can help me with that. What do you... Without warning, Sonia chucked the liquid or liquor at Wyan, drenching her in some liquor that got into Wyan's mouth as she coughed and from the strength of the alcohol. Stop that. Wyan covered her face with her hands, but Sonia didn't and continued spraying the liquor all over her until the bottle was empty. Wyan covered her eyes and looked up to the couple, tears forming in them. Sonia whispered something to Jake, who had an evil grin as he nodded, finishing, fishing for something in his pocket. You know, Wyan, back in the old days, witches were hunted down. Did you know that? Wyan shook her head, not liking where this was going. Well, they caught them. Do you know what happened to them? Another shake from Wyan's head. Hmm. Sonia held out her hand and Jake placed the something in her hand. They burned them at the stake. That's when Wyan noticed Jake. what Jake was handing. It was a lighter. She now understood their intentions. They were trying to burn her. Sonia flicked the lighter on, and that's what they did. Fear began to turn to anger and sorrow. The hate Wyan kept inside, but she couldn't contain it anymore. Sonia and Jake didn't notice the dendering glint in Wyan's eyes. They were too focused on burning her. Any last word, witch? I'm a witch, Wyan said in a monotone voice, her head hanging down. If I'm a witch, what does that make you? Huh? You put other people down so you can look up high and mighty. You get pleasure out of other people's misery. If anything, you're the witch. Sonia and Jake glared Jake's fist rejected his fist and grabbed the lighter from Sonia and held it over his head, ready to throw it at Wyan. Before he can do anything, Wyan lifted her head at the first time in his life. Jake was truly afraid. Wyan's eyes were now glowing purple, a pure red with irises that were hypnotic. It gave her a demonic look. The, treasures, the trash cans in the alley began to rattle. Both Sonia and Jake were too scared to move on with their plan, but they stood where they were, watching every movement on their own. Wyan slowly got up to her feet, a crazed smile on her face. Oh, this is the first time you actually encountered my powers firsthand, right? She said mockingly. Sonia had enough of this, and she went to get far away from Wyan as possible, tugging Jake's arm. Jake, let's get out of here. This is too freaky, Jake nodded and began to bolt to the exit. Oh, you're running away, Wyan said playfully, sounding like a child who has just been hurt. She noticed the rope nearby and began to, as it began to slither like snakes towards the couple. But please stay, you're going to miss the show. The ropes twisted and turned, wrapping around their ankles joining them to make them fall flat on their faces, barely a foot away from freedom, unknown by the force that was pulling them back into the alley. They struggled to get free. Wyan just looked to the side and saw a box labeled knife kit. She opened it inside. There were two kitchen knives that were extremely dull and rusty, but they had a point to them. They floated out of the box and floated in front of Wyan. She examined them. Hmm, not the best quality, but they'll do. With that, the knife floated to her side as she walked about a few feet from the couple, who were now scared, even screaming for help. Oh, why do you look so sad? It's your anniversary, right? You should be happy. Wyan's lip can turn into a crazed grin. Let's put a smile on your face. Without warning, the knives launched themselves to Jake and Sonia's mouth, beginning to cut it into their cheeks, 
forming a gruesome smile. Sonia and Jake screamed and grabbed the knife's handles, trying to pull them away from their faces. But with the force, it was too strong. It looked like they were doing it to themselves. The smiles were complete. The couple were crying bitterly, but their forms, they look weird against the smiles that were carved on their cheeks. There, Wyan said happily. Now you'll be happy forever. Even if they wanted to, the couple could no longer scream. The pain was too much for them to bear. Only chokes of sobs could be heard from their mouths. Hey, I have an idea. How about you and I get married right away, right here, right now? No protests, but hey, I'll do my best. The knives pointed to themselves to the couple faces and figured what me why I meant by that. Their eyes grew wide, but they couldn't do anything but show fear. By the power invested in me, she said mockingly, I here pronounce you man and wife. You might now. She ended with a sinister grin and kissed the knife. The knives plunged into their faces with a, sink, a sickly crunch, the sound of the handle blade breaking through their skulls. Wyan watched them breathe their final breath. Her eyes reverted back to normal, and her mindset returned. She flinched at the sight of the dead bullies. She knew she had caused this, but she never thought she would have the guts to actually carry out the deed she did. Crap, I'm a murderer. But hey, I don't feel regret. But she did feel a little bad. Sure, they picked on her all the time, but they didn't deserve death. But still, a little bad. The feeling passed. She felt nothing but sorrow or regret. In fact, she felt a little more alive. Wyan looked at the sky. The sun was beginning to go down. Better go back. Jeff will be at my house soon. She looked back at the bodies one last time before exiting the alley, making her way back home.